Hi there, hope you're having a good day. Welcome back to another video. Uh, to be honest, this is not the type of video that I love to do because I try to stay positive and appreciate all the sneakers. But today we're going to be talking about five basketball shoes that I think you should avoid buying in 2023. I gotta clarify once again that I am by no means calling all of them bad shoes. Uh, I just think that for certain reasons, certain playing styles or foot shapes, uh, these might not be the most ideal option. So I think it's more important that I explain why I have them on this list. And this time, I'll try to provide an alternative option from either the same brand or those that have a similar but better setup. While you're watching, please feel free to drop down your thoughts on any of these shoes, whether you agree or disagree with me at any time. Uh, that'll help by adding more perspectives to others watching. And also please consider subscribing if you're new here. We go over the performance of almost every new hoop shoe on a regular basis. Let's get started. First shoe that I think you should avoid is the Adidas Trae Young 2. Biggest reason and the simplest way to put it is that they're just quite an uncomfortable shoe. The upper materials are very disappointing. I usually love this type of a primed upper with a saw collar but on the Trae Young 2, it was executed very poorly. It's not stretchy at all, does not conform to your feet nicely. The upper presses down and squeezes your feet a lot, so it'll be terrible if you have high volume feet, and you'll probably have a hard time even putting them on. Trash and, and the Boost Plus Light Strike setup are okay, but comfort was just lacking significantly. The best alternative is easily the Harden Volume 7. Also a soft color, but just much softer materials, very cozy on feet. Another shoe that I don't think is worth buying is the Kyrie Flytrap 6. It is a budget shoe at 95 US dollars, but even for a budget shoe, there's pretty much nothing in it. Traction was meh, cushioning was lacking. To me, the midsole felt like I was landing on a flat piece of cardboard, so little to no impact protection. The Flytrap 6 actually had decent step in comfort, so it wasn't uncomfortable or anything. However, just from Nike itself, there are much better options at below 100 bucks. Like the Air Max Impact 4, for example, I think beats the Kyrie Flytrap 6 by far, with better traction, better cushioning, and more compression, thanks to the Air Max unit. Next up, this might be a controversial one. Uh, instead of dissing the Jordan 37 once again, I guess I'll put it this way. The Jordan 37 Low is a much better choice than the regular Jordan 37. Both feature leno weave, but they added an extra layer on the Low. Toe box is covered up, and padding got beefed up a little bit too. Well, on the Jordan 37, that weird see-through is just not it. I had some inner foot pain due to the materials rubbing against my ankle bones. Traction performance and cushion setup have no difference between the two. But overall, I would much rather play in the Jordan 37 low. So regular 37, I even passed on some great deals at the Nike clearance store. Okay, the next shoe is from a brand that has been consistently good with their products. But I'll explain which type of players may want to avoid these. And that shoe is the Puma Rice Nitro. This one is not a new release, but I think there might have been more interest recently because of discounts and also Mac McClung winning the dunk contest wearing these. Two main reasons of concern. Uh, one is that they are a heavy shoe. Uh, the weight bothered me a little bit when I was playing in them. And if you're a fast and shifty guard looking for a lightweight shoe, this is not it. Second thing is, the lace cover looks cool, but in terms of functionality, it's kind of a gimmick. And you won't be able to reach all the way to the tip to adjust the upper fully. And having the laces tucked in there uh, just kind of felt like some extra stuff right on top of your feet. Also, traction was more like average. So for faster, smaller, and lighter players, I would recommend avoiding these. I know if you're a pro player, or if you're really, really good, it doesn't matter, because Mac probably would've won that dunk contest wearing any shoe. I play to have fun, so I'd rather have shoes that work best for me. Hope that makes sense. So a better alternative from Puma would be either the MB2 or the TRC Blaze Court if you need to reduce the weight. Last one on this list, um, this one is not necessarily a no-go. I just think that there are much better options at that price range. And that is the SD1, or also known as the DVD1 from 361 degrees. This is the Spencer Dinwiddie signature shoe. It had amazing traction and very nice compression in the heel. However, the upper materials are a major turndown. It really felt like a grocery shopping basket with no stretch or softness whatsoever. So almost whenever I lifted my feet up during a jump or an upward motion, the shoe felt really stiff and had too much restriction in an uncomfortable way. Again, that's not a huge issue. If they come up with like a pro version and revised upper later on, 
which a lot of Chinese companies do. That shoe, I think, will be fantastic because it's really good otherwise. But for now, there are so many better options at 100 bucks or below. Obviously, a lot of it comes down to your personal preference and your foot shape. Uh, there are some other ones that I didn't think was good, like the Wei 808 2 Ultra, but only in that oxygen colorway. The translucent also had really bad traction on a dusty indoor gym, but it is very durable for outdoor use. Other ones really just cater to different consumer profiles. Like Puma hoop shoes are heavy in general. KDs are much better for narrow feet versus wide feet. Curries are probably not so good for bigs as they are for lighter and faster guards. So that's about it for the shoes I do not recommend so far this year. I'll try to keep this type of uh, do not buy list to like once in a few months or even once a year. I always love to try different things on the court and all different brands of shoes. And I also encourage a lot of you to add some diversity in your rotation, uh, just to spark things up a little bit. But with that said, there's still these downsides on these shoes to consider. So hopefully this could save you from some trouble that you may possibly have. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.